Hey everyone, it's Victor here, and Happy New Year! Wow, we survived. We made it. It's now 2020, which is honestly the most appealing year. 2020. The Roaring Twenties. Take two. I hope. 2019 was... interesting. I feel like it was a year of growth. It's one of those years you kind of have to get over and done with. It's not a year you necessarily enjoy, but it had to happen. That's honestly how I feel about it. I have grown up so much and I've learned things the hard way. I've been doing so much traveling. I've been down and back from Manchester a lot because of my top surgery appointments. And my top surgery was meant to be this year, but it didn't happen. That didn't happen. And we don't know why. I mean, the NHS is basically kind of failing, and we all know that, really. It's... They don't have the money, they don't have the staff. Things fall apart. So, that's been very frustrating. Because obviously that's kind of stopped me in my tracks, and it's been quite bad as well for my mental health. Speaking of which, my mental health this year has been... probably the worst it's been in a long time. A long time. And I haven't really admitted that on camera this year. I've been avoiding the subject a little bit. Because I always want to be positive on my channel. I always want to spread positivity and hopefulness and all this stuff. And I always will. But I have found this year particularly hard. For a number of reasons. Obviously the surgery stuff does play a part in that. But majorly, and I'm not sure if you'll laugh at me for admitting this, but this is a real thing. It has been about my skin. I have had very bad acne this year. And you know, it's just something that comes with puberty. You have to expect it, but it's hit me harder than some people. And as you can see, my skin is pretty much completely healed now. And that's all down to my obsession with having clear skin and getting clear skin and doing all this stuff to heal it basically. As a YouTuber as an influencer. If you, oh god, I hate that word. I kind of threw up a bit there. As someone who people watch a lot on screens and stuff, not as much as some, but still, I'm on screen, right? It's not really been my acne that's been the issue, it's how people respond to it and how people treat me because of it. It has destroyed <laughs> the confidence I built up over years where I look and everything like that, and I know that the way you look isn't necessarily what you should be confident about, but I've never been confident in my looks until I started to transition, until I started to become more myself, which has only really been the past year or so. So you can imagine, I'm only just getting that confidence in how I look, how I present, and then suddenly my skin gets bad. And that's what happened, and people were commenting about it, and it was painful, and I couldn't sleep on my pillow at night, and it's horrible. It just is horrible. Fundamentally, it's painful and horrible. It doesn't really matter what it looks like, but it's unpleasant to go through. And that really affected my mental health, because people watch me every day on a screen, and they comment on my skin, and I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle it, so that's really affected me this year. And yes, I've been getting a lot of requests to reveal my skincare routine and what I did to cure my acne, and I am going to make a full video on that describing what I did. It's quite complicated, and I want my skin to be kind of... I still have scarring, I still have a very, very small amount of pimples, hardly anything compared to what it was, but I kind of want my skin to be at a pretty much entirely clear state when I do that video so that the comparison pictures look like a huge difference. I mean, they do look like a huge difference, but you know, I mean, I want it to be as clear as possible before I make that video. But I think this year, no one has suffered more than the left side of my hair. <laughs> it has been... What colours has it been? It started off orange. Then we had it blue. Then we had it... Green? Yeah, more of a green than this. This is actually, I'm happy with how it is now. Can you believe? Wow. Yeah, then it went purple, and the purple went out, and now we've got this. Which is kind of like a grey green, and I actually don't mind it. I actually quite like it. So, 
No one has suffered more than the left side of my hair. That is, that's it. That's what 2019 has been. The suffering of the left side of my hair. The right side of my hair is having a party. It's still got all its curls, it's still all healthy looking. <laughs> the left side is screaming. <laughs> but I've got to be serious for a second. There has been a big opportunity that I got this year, which some of you, well, a lot of you will know about, which was working for a certain app, which meant I could earn a living wage doing what I do. Other than YouTube, YouTube does not earn me a living wage. I could make videos and earn a living wage. Amazing, incredible. There has been some drama, everyone. There has been some drama. If you watch my Instagram story, you will know about this. If you even follow me on Instagram, you'll know about this. But I want to go into full detail about what happened. And that's going to be in a separate video entirely because, oh my God, there is a, there's a lot. There's a lot that happened. It's very dramatic there will be full reconstructions of how it happened. So basically I'm not working for Amino anymore. There, I said it. But I will make a full video on why and how. So stay tuned for that. I'm sure you're super excited. Also, this is jingling. I don't know if that's annoying or not. It's my belly dancing belt. I've never done belly dancing, but I appreciate the aesthetic. Does that make me weird? Does that make me weird? I am weird, full stop, you know this. But the thing that outweighs all that bad is the incredibly good people I have experienced this year and have met this year. The likes, the comments, the fan art. Oh my God, the fan art. Just this year, I have been given over 150 individual bits of fan art. That's insane. Over 150 people individually decided to draw me, and that might not be a big number to you, but it's a big number to me. That's insane, that's never happened before, that is a new record for me. And that's not even including Locket Inktober, which was a kind of brand of Inktober that was started by Great Victor Lockhart fan on Instagram, where basically people came together and Locket, by the way, is the name that everyone decided was gonna be their like fan name for people who are fans of me. That was a really weird way of describing it, but you know what I mean, you get it. The fan base of me are called Lockets. So basically Locket Inktober was like Inktober, but related to me. And people would do art every day and tag me in their posts and I would share them on my story. And it was just basically a big artsy love fest and it made me so, so happy. Just the idea that I could inspire anyone to be creative, anyone to do art is absolutely incredible. And I feel like I, I over say all this all the time, but I genuinely am shook by the passion that people have for what I do. Like, I don't even, I don't even know what I do. <laughs> so I'm glad that you seem to know what I do and that you enjoy it and that it inspires you to pick up a pen or a mouse or a tablet or whatever. Whatever art you do, someone painted a rock, I think, once. Where is it? I think I, I'll put it here that someone painted a rock. I'm pretty sure. It might have been Great Victor Lockhart fan, actually. They've done a lot. They are such an amazing person. Jiri is a wonderful person. I want to say that. You've made my year so special because you have started all this fan stuff. I haven't done any of it. You've started it. It's, it's amazing. So thank you, Jiri. Speaking of good people, though, the main bonus for this year has been that I got a boyfriend. And you may have seen him in quite a few videos that I've made this year, like vlogs and stuff, and we did a couple's tag and all that jazz. Teddy is such a blessing in my life. He has given me such grounding and made me, okay, this is so soppy. Oh my God, I should probably stop. Made me believe in a relationship that can be comfortable and happy and not full of drama because I don't know what's wrong with me, but my past relationships have been always full of drama. Always, they've ended badly. People have been weird and jealous and crazy and mm, not good. Those people were not right for me. We didn't gel, it got bad. I'm a Scorpio, so if you believe in all that stuff, got a bit dicey and I wasn't happy. And yeah, trust wasn't there in previous relationships. No way, but with Teddy, I have so much trust. 
and I just feel like we're <laughs> made for each other. <laughs> oh my god, I can't even, I don't I can't even say that seriously. I had to say that in a SpongeBob voice. Voice. I had to say that in a SpongeBob voice because I couldn't take it seriously. No, I'm just um when it comes to like feelings and like being genuine, I never know how to come across genuine. So apologies if I'm like sort of making a joke about it, but genuinely, Teddy is wonderful. I love him very much. But yeah, I think creatively on my channel, in terms of my content, it has been a little down in quality, I think. Personally, I haven't made any big films and CMVs that I'm truly, truly proud of. And that's all been because of my insecurity with how I looked and stuff, because I thought if I made something that really kicked off, that got really popular, and I had to put my face out there, I'd be out there for more people to hate on me and leave horrible comments, and I couldn't take that this year. I, I couldn't physically take that. Like, my mental health was too vulnerable, and I didn't want to risk it. That doesn't mean that I haven't been working on big things and I haven't got big plans. I actually have been working on a music video for pretty much the second half of 2019. It's been a long process because of obviously all the other issues and the traveling and not having time to film. I still haven't finished it. Like I'm, I'm proud of it so far and I really, really want it to be good enough so I can feel proud of it and that you guys will like it because I want to challenge myself and I consider myself a filmmaker, but I'm putting all my energy into making one video a week for YouTube and all the other time is juggling my life and trying to earn money and all this stuff that it's so hard to reach for those goals and to make creative films for the sake of making creative films and it's so sad to me and I really 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 hope that next year I'm gonna have more time to do that I just love filmmaking it makes my soul happy it makes my like heart sore to do stuff involved in it. Yeah, it's still my dream and I still want to pursue it with all of myself. I have every intention of reaching for my goals and making this decade the best of my life. I'm not gonna take no for an answer. I'm going to make this decade the most incredible time of my life and I can feel it. I can feel it. I know it's going to be good. You have to control your own life. You have to sit up and realize you have the power to decide what's going to happen to you. We are going to make these 20s roar and I know the world seems like it's in such a mess right now. Everywhere. It seems like it's in such a mess. Everything's just gone completely insane. But tell me this. How many stories and how many movies have the main character in this terrible situation or fighting their circumstances with all of their will and emerging out on top despite everything and being victorious? That is your life. That's all our lives. It doesn't matter what your circumstances are. You're the main character. You're gonna fight those circumstances the world, yeah, looks like it's apocalyptic, but that is the perfect stage for you, the main character, to fight that and to overcome it. I know it seems mad and I know it looks like, oh, what this insane boy is telling me that I can be like a superhero. I'm not saying you can be a superhero. I'm saying that so many people don't know the power they have as a human being. So many people ignore the fact that you can change things. Like, you have so much opportunity. You just need to pave your way. You need to plow your own furrow. You need to think outside the box and think about another way of living. Don't follow what people have done before. Make your own life, make your own decisions because you are undefined. No one has defined how your life is gonna go. You have that power. They think, oh, I'm born, I go to school, that's it. I choose my job when I'm 10 and then I work towards that. I get that job, get married, have kids, die. Fair enough, if, you, if that gives you joy to do that, then do that. But so many people think that's the only option. So many people think that's it. And that way of living, that kind of, the way society says you should live, 
That's becoming harder because of how everything is. But that's not the only way to live. There are infinite ways to live. We didn't always have this infrastructure, this technology, this way of mass producing food and clothing and all these things. We came, we came from nothing. We built all of this and yet it can be taken away just as easily. Actually, it wasn't easy building it. It can be taken away much easier than how it was built up, okay? But that doesn't mean that humanity is going to end. We're fighters, we're survivors, we're here for a reason. So whatever is thrown at us, we're not going to crumble. We're going to thrive like we always have. So think about that. Think about that when you think about what's going on in the world right now. You're going to thrive no matter what is thrown at you. I'm telling you this right now. So please remember it as we enter the new year and as you decide what you're going to do with your time and how you're going to spend your life. You can thrive in whatever you choose to do. Power and luck and all this stuff isn't reserved for politicians or billionaires or that guy that has like 500 more followers than you on Instagram. Like, literally, those things mean nothing. You have just as much power and strength as those people do. There's nothing about those people that makes them more special other than, yeah, they're a politician or whatever, but that's like a label. Or that person has 50,000 followers on blah, blah, blah. Like, who cares? 50,000 people found their account. Maybe they paid for those people. You don't know people's circumstances. There is like, it just doesn't matter. None of those things matter. We're all equal. We're literally all equal. It's just the things that have happened to us that make our lives different. It's how we were born. It's our skin color. It's our race. It's our gender. It's our sexuality. It's where we're born in the world. These are all things that change the way our lives are. But that doesn't define what our lives are. They may be society's definitions. But you, like I've said before, are undefined. And I want you to just imagine your air, okay? Because none of that matters. Your gender, your race, your sexuality, none of that matters. If you take all of that away, if you take all of society's views and messed up things away, then you can truly see who you are and what you're meant to do. And that's what you should do. Take away all of that and just be human. And this got way, way deeper than I was expecting it to, but thinking about the new year and thinking about the future makes me get a bit existential. So I'm sorry about that. I'm not saying that the next decade is going to be easy and it's not gonna be challenging because, oh boy, it's probably gonna be quite challenging, but the best things in life are. The best things in life make you learn and make you grow and all that stuff. That's what makes life so interesting. You do not want it easygoing all the time because you would not appreciate what it is to be happy. People that have had their life handed to them on a silver platter are miserable because they have no idea what it's like to go through hard times. It's only people that go through hard times that can appreciate the good times. And I've probably said that like a million times in videos before, but it is literally so true. It really is so true. So if I'm completely honest with you, I really don't know what 2020 looks like for me. Very few people do, I suppose. But whatever happens, I'm gonna let it happen. C'est la vie. I'm gonna move forward. I'm gonna keep thinking about what I want to do, how I can make my life more fulfilling for myself. And that's what I'm gonna focus on every day. So don't be tough on yourself if you don't meet those goals and you don't meet those resolutions that you made for yourself. I always try to remember that expectation is the root of all heartache. That is such a good quote to remember. So sometimes resolutions can be really bad for you because it gives you that expectation of what you can achieve. And if you don't achieve those things, even though you maybe had an amazing year, it can ruin it because of that expectation. So I am not going to write down specific bullet points in what I want to achieve this year. I'm just going to let it happen and see what I do. Maybe that's not the way for everyone, but 
I think that's what's best for my mental health. But anyway, I have talked a lot and I think I've said all I needed to say and I really think that the future is bright. So, for now, thank you all so much for watching. Have a happy new year and I will see you very soon.